When you think about a fiery Spanish city on a beach with striking architecture, great bars and clubs and fabulous people, most think about Barcelona and they flock there in their millions. But if you want all that, there's a less well-known little gem only 200 miles down the coast, Valencia. And so far, Valencia hasn't been hit by the British invasion, which means that most hotels in the city centre are up to 30% cheaper at the weekend. That said, I've decided to stay somewhere a little different. This is Casa Azul, and it costs 270 euros a night. Now, there are plenty of quirky places to stay in Valencia, but my hotel is definitely worth a mention. It's only got three rooms, and each one is decorated by a different designer. As you can see, I've gone Baroque. What I love most about this room is that it's pretty small, but it comes complete with a piano. But no matter how nice my hotel room is, that's not what I came here for. So first, I'm off to the Plaza de la Reine with its numerous cafes and Valencia's cathedral. Now, you know me, I wouldn't normally do cathedrals unless there was a very good reason. Well, A, this one is beautiful. And B, apparently, this is the home of the Holy Grail. The cathedral dates back to the 13th century and has been changed and added to over the years, so it's a splendid cocktail of architectural styles. This is my guide Angela, and you can have a tour of the cathedral for around 10 euros. The cathedral's crowning asset in a post-Da Vinci Code era has to be the Holy Grail. Some people believe the Holy Grail is a person, but this is what the people of Valencia believe, is the Holy Grail. The Holy Grail is a cup, it's not a person. <laughs> it's the Holy Grail that the Jesus Christ used in the last, at the Last Supper. And how did it end up here in Valencia? Well, because in the 15th century, uh, the king, or king at the time, gave us like a present mm -hmm. to the city. That's a serious present, and that's how you've ended up with the Holy Grail. In the Plaza del Ayatamiento at 2 p.m., something else unique to this city is about to happen. I'm here in March, and it's the lead-up to a big festival called the Fayas. And what they do every day is set off an enormous round of firecrackers to get everybody in a sort of a pre-celebratory mood. The Fayas takes place from the 12th to the 19th of March, and it's a big deal. Each neighbourhood creates its own Fayas, huge satirical caricatures, which are paraded through the streets before they're burned in a massive celebration of dancing, drinking and fireworks. It grew from a tradition of burning leftover wood on St Joseph's Day to mark the start of spring. I think we've just got a minute to go. Apparently if you close your ears like this, you should open your mouth a bit to absorb the vibrations. Is it really that loud? But not me, because I'm off to the south of the city to see the breathtaking Center for Arts and Science. The center was designed by Santiago Calatrava, who's considered one of the greatest living architects. It was developed as a symbol of the government's quest to establish this city as a great tourist destination. I expect it's going to work because it is truly stunning. What used to be the riverbed before 1996 has been transformed into this futuristic cityscape. And right next door is another stunning bit of design, Europe's largest aquarium. There are over 500 different species here, and it's divided into different zones, from the Arctic, where you can meet the beautiful beluga whale, to temperate, where you can see a kaleidoscope of tropical fish. It's got a mouth, <laughs> little eyes. I want you to see his smiling mouth. Look at that! It really is like scuba diving with none of the hassle. This is a really cool oceanarium. It really is. If fish and all things sea life float your boat in any way, I mean, this is a really, it's a good day you could spend here, I'd say. So far, I've hardly come across a single tourist. It really feels like I'm experiencing the city more like a local, and I hear the locals like their nightlife. Valencia has long boasted one of the liveliest bar and club scenes in Spain, and they even know some tricks I don't to kickstart your night. 
Right, I'm going to try the local tipple, and it's called Agua de la Valencia. I'll tell you one thing I do know about it. Agua is not the key ingredient. Hola. No. So this is uh, the local drink. W uh, what are the ingredients? What goes in? Uh, vodka. Vodka. Gin. Cointreau. Martini. Vodka, gin, Cointreau Ma martini. and martini. Champagne. Yeah. Sugar. I'd had some cocktails in my time. But that's quite a mix. Oh. <laughs> now let's see if we can carry on filming. <laughs> Apparently downing it in one is not the recommended way to drink it, but hey, I'm on holiday, sort of. One of the real joys of a place like this is just wandering through the streets and it's no less picturesque at night. I've been given a tip as well about a pretty special local bar. Now obviously there are bars and clubs galore in Valencia that you can go to, but it's also become the home to the new modern flamenco scene. And that tickles my fancy. Flamenco is growing in popularity with young people in Valencia. This isn't a performance put on for tourists around the hotel pool in the Costa del Sol. It's real and charged. Valencia's got it all going on from flamenco to fiestas, but what really makes this place special is the people, because they're so full of energy and full of soul. Where else do you know where the locals leave the office every day to go and cheer and stamp to thunderous fireworks and then go back to work? For me, the place and the people get a Bradbury star.